Stephanie here with a video for My Favorite Things. In today's video, I'm going to be using some products from the new June 2017 release, and we're going to create a card that features the new Fairy Happy stamp set and coordinating dynamics, as well as the maze pieces. We're going to create a maze game that can actually be removed from the card so that the recipient can remove it and play it as a game. So to start off, I'm going to create the panel that's going to form the front of our card. So I have the radiating ray stencil and I have that positioned in the center top area of the panel and I'm just using some squeezed lemonade distress ink and adding color through that stencil there. So I have this really nice sun effect in the center now. I let it kind of fade off towards the edges and then once I had enough to complete the sun, I'm now switching over to peacock feathers distress ink and adding some blue around the sun just to give the look of sky and some twisted citron to the bottom to give the look of grass. I really love how the blue kind of blends with the yellow of the sun and gives kind of a green look there. I just think it looks really cool to have them kind of blend into each other. I also added some water to the panel and used a paper towel to soak up the excess and that just gives it a really fun splotchy distressed look. I just love the look of that, especially on a sky background. Now to create the panel area that we're going to use to create the maze, I used the Blueprints 28 Dynamics and I cut the panel using the large rectangle die there and it also has that kind of flap opening on the front. And we're going to use that to open and close over top of our maze. So I pulled out all the pieces that I need to assemble the maze. So what I'm going to do first is cut out a circle window area in the front of the panel. And for that I'm using the circle shaker window and frame dynamics. And you can see there that the circle shaker pouch and that frame pieces or that maze piece is going to fit perfectly in that opening. I also need to cut out a second circle. This is going to be a solid circle and I'm using the circle stacks dynamics to cut this one. And this I just need to make sure is going to fit in behind the circle shaker pouch and be able to have that adhere to it. Because we're going to remove this from the card and have it its own standalone game, I want to make sure that the maze has its own backer piece. So I don't want to use any parts of the card, if that makes sense, to be the back of the maze. I want it to have its own little area. So that's what I'm doing here with this circle that I've cut out. I went ahead and figured out where the center is and stamped a flower and then I've also added the same sun detail that I did to the front of the card so that it would kind of match when the card is closed. You're still going to see all that same sun detail that we did in the front panel. Once I had that done, I took the maze piece and added it to the circle. I used a little tiny bit of adhesive on the back of that maze just to make sure it doesn't shift around at all because I want that little flower to stay in the center. Then I also added a little maze sphere, which is the little silver ball inside my maze. Added a little bit of color to the flower, which I almost forgot to do. Um, and now I'm going to put the maze together. So I have the circle shaker pouch. I put some adhesive on the back of that and I'm adhering it down onto that little circle panel that we've created. And that is going to completely enclose my maze inside the circle shaker pouch. And then I'm going to finish it off by adding the little frame that we have cut out from white cardstock directly on top. And what that does is it completely encloses that shaker pouch. We don't have any adhesive showing and it makes it look completely finished. So now we can go ahead and start to assemble the card and put all these components together. So what I've done is I've taken a white top folding card base. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inches when it's closed, which is a standard A2 size card. And now I'm going to kind of figure out where everything needs to be positioned so that I can start to adhere everything down. Before I do start to adhere everything though, I do need to finish my stamping. So I wanna get these fairies stamped and colored and get them ready to add to the card. So I have both of the fairies from the Fairy Happy stamp set and I've stamped them both onto a piece of white card stock with black licorice hybrid ink. And now I'm taking my Copic markers and adding color to these two images. Now I've got this sped up. Um, I don't actually color that fast. I wish I did, but I don't. So I'm just gonna kinda of go through here quick. I didn't really do anything too fancy. I did a little bit of shading in her hair and on her skin. On both of the images just because those are kind of larger areas. I accidentally cut, colored a little piece of her headband with the brown there but I'm just going to go over it with my pink and you're not even going to notice. Um, and then for the little clothes that they're wearing and their wings and stuff I didn't really use a lot of color. I just pretty much used one color on all of those areas and didn't really do any shading or blending. They're very small so it works just to have the solid color. So once I had them both colored in, I used the coordinating dies and cut both of them out. And now I have all the pieces ready to go and I can start to assemble the card. So for the back area of the panel here that we're going to add, we're only going to put adhesive around the outside edge. We don't want any adhesive on that flap there. That If we do, then it's going to prevent the flap from being able to open and close. And you do want to use a really strong adhesive because this is an interactive card and people are going to be opening it and closing the little panel there in the front. You want to make sure that the adhesive you have around the outside is really going to hold to that card base and it's not going to pull apart. 
Now for the little fairy image that I want for the inside of the card, I want her to kind of be tucked in behind that panel. So I adhered her right to that panel before I adhered it down just so I was able to kind of position her exactly where I wanted. And now I'm going to add the maze. Now this you can do a few different ways. You can make it so that it doesn't even come out of the card if you prefer. But like I mentioned before, I wanted to have a game that was kind of independent of the card that could be pulled out. So I'm just using some adhesive Velcro tabs. These I've had for a really long time. I believe they're made by Tombow. And what they do is they allow me to add that Velcro to both the maze piece and the inside of the card, which allows me to remove that maze and not have it stay permanently in the card. Now you can leave it so that your maze doesn't come out or you can use magnet tape. You could use repositionable adhesive. You can pretty much use anything on hand that will allow you to easily remove the maze game from the card. And then once you have that done, you just want to go ahead and finish adding everything on. So I added the sentiment at the bottom with some black licorice dye ink. And then I'm adhering that second fairy to the front of the card. And to make sure that she sits properly on the card front, because that maze game is a little bit dimensional, I used two layers of double-sided foam tape underneath that fairy to add her on there. And then to let the recipient know that the little maze game can be lifted off of there and taken out of the card, I used the new interactive label stamp set and stamped the word lift with a little arrow on the inside of the card there. And now we have this completed card where we have this fun interactive maze game that is completely standalone from the card. And then we have this really cute card that has this fun interactive detail. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you'll give it a try and have fun with these maze pieces. They are so much fun to create with and there are so many different things that you can do with them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.